happen. Now, I'm going to show you some images, and these images, I hope you can relate them. We've talked about this image before. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is the kidney, followed by the liver, and then we have a whole channel of events that are going to yield something called aldosterone. And when you yield aldosterone, that's where all the blood pressure problems are starting from. So this image, we will use it shortly today, and we will use it on Wednesday. Why? Because this is where the mode of action of drugs for hypertension is coming from. This is what we call the RAS system, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And you'll see each stage, there are drugs that target each stage. Imagine we have drugs that target each stage in the RAS system, but we are unable to control or treat hypertension, that you have to take drugs for a lifetime. Imagine that. Is it a similar situation to the HIV? Where you have a drug or medicines targeting every step in the life cycle of HIV, but we can actually lower the HIV to a level that is undetectable in blood, but we cannot eradicate HIV. Hello? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah? Do you relate the two? Imagine that, that we have drugs that target every stage and can block every stage of this, I call it life cycle maybe, or this chain that is going to cause you high blood pressure. But we are unable to treat high blood pressure and that you have to take drugs for a lifetime. Who is fooling who? Imagine that you have drugs targeting every stage of the life cycle of HIV. We can even bring HIV virus to a level that your immune system can actually take over. But we cannot destroy it. So how did you bring it down to that level? How did we bring the virus down to a level that the, the immune system takes over? How? And then we cannot eradicate it. How did it bring it down? Those are the questions that we ask. But when you ask, you're told, we find a kazi wete nyumbani. Yeah, okay? <laughs> Do your job and go home. <laughs> Amazing. So all the same, let's start this. Now, another diagram is here. Now, I know when you see this second part of the diagram, uh, you start asking questions that don't make sense. <laughs> Please, resolve your manners, okay? This diagram is not what you're thinking. So, yes. So, this up here is the hypothalamus. And then, this is the pituitary gland. The one that looks like whatever you're thinking is the pituitary gland. The larger part is what we call the anterior pituitary gland. And then the smaller part is the posterior. Anterior means it is in front. Posterior means it is behind. So this is the, the pituitary, pituitary gland. And this gland is the one that produces almost all hormones that you have in that body. Okay? And then when we go down, this is the ovary. Okay? So we'll use that to demonstrate the ovary. Why am I showing you this diagram? I'm showing you this diagram because this is where your production of estrogen starts from. Now, estrogen is a female hormone. It's the one that is responsible for secondary female characteristics, the fat deposition, the narrow voice, the femininity, and the cycle. And it's called actually estrogen for a reason, because it initiates the cycle. Okay, it's the one that initiates the cycle in every animal, a female, a female animal, every month. So this one is the hormone that is responsible for your menstruation. Perfect. On the other hand, the same same ovary produces another hormone that is called progesterone. And we said Progesterone has different functions. Function number one is progesterone blocks or masks the side effects of estrogen, which tells you one of these hormones is totally dangerous on extreme levels, which is which hormone? Estrogen. So the reason why we need progesterone to come in is because it comes in to mask the side effects of estrogen. And we will talk about those side effects, one of which is hypertension. That's why when you start taking hormonal contraceptives, you end up raising estrogen levels, you end up having hypertension, weak bones, endometriosis, PCOS, cervical and breast cancer, okay, infertility, secondary infertility, very severe uh, acne that is called cystic acne. And then now you have to take medication for each of those. And those are just symptoms of high estrogen in the system. So the system has actually fooled you that you can actually have hormonal imbalance and go and take drugs that are supposed to treat hormonal imbalance. Yet, the symptoms that you're experiencing as a result of hormonal imbalance are actually just symptoms of high estrogen in the system. So if you really know how to lower estrogen levels back to normal, you're good to go. And one of the sides uh, of, the, of, of the ways to lower estrogen is avoiding hormonal contraceptives. And I told you, and I'll repeat, birth control is in the hands of men. How many women have you seen telling you that they went to a gynecologist, 
they were inserted that IUD and after 10 years they go back, it is nowhere to be seen. It has disappeared. How many women are suffering depression because of hormonal contraceptives? How many of you are suffering constant urinary tract infections, daily infections? You treat this, tomorrow you have another one. Yeast infection after yeast infection after yeast infection. How many of you ladies are having these severe headaches and when you go to take a blood pressure test is high? How many of you are suffering high polypidemias, high fats and the triglycerides in the system, but you don't know that this is because of the estrogen levels? How many of you are unable to lose weight even after trying so much, joining all these weight loss groups until you get to Dr. Lewis weight loss group? That's when you change your life for the better. How many of you are still telling me, Dr. you know I want to get rid of this thing, but my husband, but my husband, but my husband. How many of you are suffering? Every single day you are suffering all these problems with estrogen, but you don't even know. So you're trying to lose weight. You're doing everything possible to lose weight, but you're not, you're not being able to lose weight. You give up along the way, not because you don't have an identity, but because you have an implant, but because you have an injection, a depot, but because you have a hormonal IUD. And all these things are actually messing up our women. But we don't see, we don't want to talk about it. How many of women are now suffering cervical cancer? But the same, same government that is actually telling you to give your 10-year-old daughters HPV vaccines to prevent them from getting cancer is the same, same government that when they get to 18 is supplying them with hormonal contraceptives for free in the name of family planning. How? How is it making sense? Now you saw the other day our children were being vaccinated with polio vaccine. We don't even know if it's polio. And this is the weird part. This is the wicked part about the system. That a vaccine comes from outside. It's still on clinical trials. And they use you guys as lab rats. A vaccine comes from outside, straight to JKIA. And it's taken from there, straight to hospitals for administration. Yet we have a quality control laboratory that is supposed to analyze these things and then release them. What are they doing? Yet we have a pharmacy and poisons board that is supposed to take this and tell us this is safe for consumption. How many of you are seeing these things? That cooking oils are just coming from outside, coming into our country and straight into the markets. And yet we have Kenya Bureau of Standards that is supposed to standardize all these products. What is happening? So children are, took the, the, the polio vaccine and look at what happened. Side effects are coming in and nobody is trying to associate them with this. And then, after that, our own Ministry of Health comes in and says, hey, you know what, uh, we have noted that actually this can be a problem. We are doing something to make sure that we don't associate these side effects directly to the vaccine. And I'm like, oh, you guys are the ones who have allowed this vaccine to come in. Now, how is it possible that now they are here, we are suffering, then you are telling us you are actually looking for ways to dissociate the vaccine from these side effects. There was a drug that was called thalidomide. Thalidomide was a drug that was very effective back then. And then that drug was used and caused a lot of deformities in children who were being born. They had this thing called focomelia. Their feet were, their hands were this tight and their legs were very small. That came in after administration of this vaccine. And these companies that produce these vaccines they made a lot of billions of dollars within a period of 10 to 15 years. Imagine a vaccine being administered for about 10 to 15 years. By the time they said, oh, you know what? Actually, this vaccine was a problem. Actually, this thalidomide was a problem. 10 years has gone. Imagine the generation that comes in 10 years later. My friends, health is, health is dangerous. Health, health is a very sensitive field. And that's why I'm telling you. Sometimes, even if you're so gullible, choose who you listen to, and look deeply if they totally understand what they are saying. Ask them questions. If they run, also run. When they run from your questions, also be quick to run from what they are actually buy, selling you. Because if they are advertising that, you are the product. And our media is the first to advertise these things. And they get pride in it because it's a paid advertisement. They advertise it everywhere. They sell you the fear. Oh, you know, if you don't give these vaccines, your children will be this way. You buy the fear. Oh, this is a new regimen for cancer. And if you don't take this regimen, you will die and you buy the fear. And I want you to remember, back in the 90s when HIV was a big deal, when everybody who was suffering from HIV was in billboards, 
and you used to see that billboard and you see how that person I'm a conda that person is thin and you become so scared it was very intentional and then that time antiretrovirals were very expensive now I want, to, I want to take you through a metamorphosis after that everybody was running to antiretrovirals to protect themselves from hiv and all that and it was a big deal but people still died later on 10 20 years after people are now comfortable with the disease they understand it even better they can boost their immune system and still survive now they came with something called the pep now you don't have to worry if you have the sex no problem you will not get the hiv you will simply use the pep to protect yourself from getting hiv and then again prices of pep went up not knowing that it's just the same H <laughs> arvs and all of us where where anytime you make a mistake you're running there anytime you make a mistake you're running for pep now you're getting used to pep and now we have now prep so don't worry you can actually be involved in unprotected sex and very weird sexual behavior after taking this medication to actually protect you from hiv i'm sitting back i'm like hey what is this in wajinga aje this in wajinga aje and research is research research every after research every public uh, peer reviewed papers are coming out however the disease is the same now look at it this way science is evolving perfect how is it that the medical syllabus the pharmacy syllabus and the nutrition syllabus are still the same medical syllabus pharmacy syllabus nutrition syllabus are still the same but ladies and gentlemen science is evolving right yeah, you cannot question the syllabus science is evolving but the syllabus has to remain the same do not fear do not fear ask those questions ask those questions the fear is gone anyway let's go back to our topic of the day so from the hypothalamus let's use the diagram because most of you need this to understand from the hypothalamus we send a signal to the pituitary through a hormone that is called gnrh gonadotropin releasing hormone do not cram we have gonadotropin releasing hormone coming from the hypothalamus to stimulate our anterior part, the bigger part of the pituitary gland, so that this one gives us something called follicle stimulating hormone or the luteinizing hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone is a hormone that actually stimulates the maturity of the ovary. Okay? So there, those two, the FSH and LH, are what we call the gonadotropins. So remember, above we had gonadotropin release hormone. Now we are releasing the gonadotropin. So we tell this gentleman to release. That's why we're using a release hormone. This gentleman releases our gonadotropin, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Those two. And then these two go straight to the ovaries to act on the ovaries. And when they act on the ovaries, it gives you two hormones, actually three hormones. One hormone is progesterone. The second hormone is estrogen. The third hormone is inhibin. Inhibin is the one that actually blocks now excessive production of these two hormones. Because when we overproduce these two hormones, we need a mechanism to stop their production. We call it a negative feedback. So inhibin tells the hypothalamus, please, we have had enough, do not produce anymore. That is the natural physiology and functioning of the system. So the ovaries are the primary producers of estrogen and progesterone. Secondary to that, when you get pregnant, the placenta starts to produce estrogen and progesterone so it takes over now and as you age there is that gland on top of the kidneys that is called the adrenal gland that is the gland that takes over to start producing these hormones because your ovaries are shutting down and when the industries or the factories are shutting down of course the products that are coming from the factory starts to go down we need supplementation for us to go into the second phase of life which is menopause actively and fairly so the adrenal glands take over so as you consume the wheat, as you consume the seed oils, as you consume the sugar, as you take steroid injections, as you take those steroid pills every other time, you're actually shutting down the adrenal gland. And that's the reason why women start suffering when they get to menopause. Because they're using steroids to lighten their skins, they're using steroids to fatten their hips, they're using steroids for chronic conditions like inflammatory bowel syndrome, colitis, and asthma. And then they're shutting down the adrenal gland. And when you shut down the adrenal gland, you suffer when you age. Because now the production of progesterone, that is a hormone that is supposed to actually guard you and give you a healthy menopause, is now diminished. 
And that's how you start suffering. Amazing. So now progesterone, from the word progesterone, you will see it means progestation. Progesterone, progestation. So it's a hormone that is actually the one that maintains pregnancy, makes you actually ovulate, get pregnant, and then maintains the pregnancy. That's why when you have uh, uh, threatened abortion, you're actually given progesterone pills to boost progesterone so that you can actually maintain the pregnancy. Okay? Once you understand that, you're good to go. Estrogen is the other one that controls menstrual cycle. Estrogen is the one that gives you all those, all that anger, the depression, the, the <laughs> unstable emotions. That's why we tell you, when you bring estrogen on our platform, we tell you, hey, please, go and fast and lower estrogen because of the side effects of estrogen. Having understood that channel under which this is happening, now I want you to see this. We have brought down from the hypothalamus to the pituitary to the uh, ovaries. Now we have the estrogen. How does this estrogen then end up affecting our system? Remember this. You cannot wake up one day and your system is misbehaving. It's not possible. The system must have an instability for it to start misbehaving. Therefore, most of the instabilities that are happening in our system we are causing them by lifestyle modifications that are actually crazy. We eat very bad foods. We never take time to fast. We take hormonal contraceptives. We eat GMO foods. We use skin products that have high phthalates that are actually estrogen and endocrine disruptors. We use non-sticky pants. We are always constantly trying to lighten our skins with products that actually affect the adrenal gland. We are taking steroids every time. We have messed up guts because we are eating unhealthy foods. We drink alcohol. And then we defend it. That alcohol is good for the gut and digestion. Wine is good for the gut and digestion. All these things are going to get you problems because they are going to raise your estrogen levels. And guess what? When you raise estrogen levels, not only shall you suffer reproductive health issues, we are actually seeing a lot of women coming in with girl stones. Girl stones, and you take the history of these women, they are on hormonal contraceptives. They are obese or overweight. Their lifestyle is crazy. They sit in an office from morning to evening, chasing a career, and then go back home and again support the husband by taking contraceptives so that he can enjoy aimless ejaculation. That is what we do all the time. And the side effects of this, I tell women, anytime you take a P2, anytime you take an oral contraceptive, anytime you take that depot, you're doing it for your own selfish interest, not for the man, because men are the ones who are supposed to control birth. If he understands that, he's a man. If he doesn't, he's a male. So choose you. So that estrogen activates the liver. And remember, this same, same liver is the organ that is actually important in breaking down estrogen. So it metabolizes estrogen. Okay, so it's important. This liver is very important because it's the one that actually helps you lower estrogen. When you eat cruciferous vegetables, the cabbages, the broccoli, the cauliflower, the cucumbers, the eggplants, the carrots, you give the liver enzymes that actually break down estrogen. And then you fast, you start breaking down estrogen and now your system stabilizes and that's a healthy life. So therefore vegetables are very important in bringing down estrogen levels. I'm not telling you to eat cruciferous vegetables when you still have an implant on your hand. Go get out of that thing. Just get it out before you start eating healthy and fasting. So you can be fasting, yet you have an implant that is lasting five years. What are you doing?